The popliteal nerve block is a regional block designed to provide anesthesia for foot and ankle surgery. It is often combined with the saphenous nerve block to provide complete lower leg and ankle sensory loss. The equipment required to perform a popliteal nerve block includes a nerve stimulator and electrode, two 20 milliliter syringes connected by a stopcock, and 40 milliliters of the anesthetic of your choice. You will also need a 5 milliliter or tuberculin syringe with 25 gauge needle, 1% lidocaine, and povidone iodine swabs. Obtain a 22 gauge 50 millimeter insulated stimulating needle. A marking pen, sterile towels, and sterile gauze are also required. Place the patient in the lateral decubitus position with the leg to be blocked superior to the contralateral leg. The lower leg and foot need to be easily visualized to appreciate the muscle twitches generated by the nerve stimulator. The electrode should be placed on the patient's leg to complete the electrical circuit. Ensure that the posterior surface of the patient's leg is well exposed. Both the tibial nerve and common perineal nerve can be accessed from the popliteal fossa. Viewing the internal structures of the popliteal fossa discloses the proximity of the tibial and common perineal nerves slightly above the joint. Identify the landmarks of the fossa. Mark the popliteal crease. Palpate and mark the borders of the popliteal triangle. Flex the knee to mark the biceps femoris tendon laterally and the semimembranosus and semitendinosus tendon medially. Using your ruler, make a mark 7 cm superior to the popliteal crease along the border of each tendon. Identify the midpoint between the two markings. This will be your point of insertion. Once you have identified the anatomical landmarks, prep the skin starting at your insertion site proceeding outwards. Repeat this step three times. Allow the povidone iodine to dry before proceeding with needle insertion. Put on sterile gloves before proceeding or ask an associate to assist you such that sterility is maintained throughout the remainder of the procedure. After prepping the skin, put on sterile gloves. Using the tuberculin syringe, create a skin wheel with the 1% lidocaine in the cutaneous tissue over the insertion site. Prior to inserting the stimulating needle, Use a beveled needle to puncture the skin. The puncture site will allow the blunt tip of the stimulating needle to pass easily through the skin. Turn on the nerve stimulator. Set the dial to generate 1.5 milliamps of current. Holding the needle perpendicular to the skin, insert the needle slowly at the previously marked needle insertion site. As the needle penetrates the skin and subcutaneous tissue, local muscle stimulation may be achieved. If this occurs, gently pull the needle back and redirect it away from the previous path. As the needle is inserted, continue to watch for the appropriate muscle stimulation. This includes calf twitching and toe flexion. When appropriate muscle stimulation is achieved, the amplitude of electrical current is decreased. Continue to monitor the muscles for twitching. Maintain nerve stimulation at a current level of 0.2 milliamps to 0.5 milliamps. The proximity of the stimulating needle to the two nerves, as indicated by stimulation at a low level of current, increases the likeliness of an efficacious block. If the nerve stimulation is lost as you decrease the stimulating current, slowly redirect the needle to regain muscle movement. If you have difficulty attaining muscle twitching of the calf and toe flexion, bring the needle back to the skin and redirect it one centimeter laterally. If the needle is located in an overly medial position, 
the tip will not stimulate the nerve, but will instead be inadvertently directed toward the popliteal artery and vein. When muscle twitch is sustained at 0.5 milliamps, it is appropriate to inject anesthetic. Aspirate the syringe to ensure the needle tip is not located within a vascular structure. Inject the anesthetic in divided doses, monitoring the patient for signs of intravascular injection. Warn the patient of signs or symptoms he would experience if the anesthetic were injected into a vessel. Aspirate the syringe after each 5 milliliter dose. Inject a total dose of 40 milliliters of anesthetic. After the anesthetic has been injected, remove the stimulating needle. Depending on the anesthetic used, the patient may not experience the complete effect of the block for up to 25 minutes.